Hello friends, welcome to Inside Saigon Initiative. In today's video, we are going to discuss about prelims high yielding series 3. It is related to environment topic. In this video, we are going to discuss about January to April important environmental issue. And one more thing I would like to tell you, after looking at the previous two videos, based on the request from some of the students, I included the PYQs as well. PYQs related to these topics. Actually, this kind of videos and topic wise, for example, on environment, you can expect like around 6 to 8 videos before your 2024 prelims. In this way, based on the marks weightage like quality and based on the international relations, like that you can expect based on the subject weightage 6 to 8 videos by 2024 April, I mean 2024 prelims. So by the way, once again I am telling you, at the end of the video, PYQs are there based on these topics, okay, based, relevant to these topics. Now before discussing further, first let us see what we are going to learn in today's video. In today's video, we are going to discuss about following 10 topics. And this first topic is about the NCAP, that is about the National Clean Air Program. Why we are discussing about this now? Because the according to government observation, the National Clean Air Program, it is unable to achieve its target as expected. Its progress is also very slow, okay? And to achieve the desired targets, our progress have, has to be very fast and that is the observation. So as a part of that, we have to know NCAP stats by which organization and which is the nodal ministry and some other information related to NCAP. So National Clean Air Program, so it started four years, since four years, the progress achieved under this program is very slow and the pollution, the pollution has only reduced very little bit. That means a lot of progress has to made. This was launched in 2019 under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. You have to know about this. And they launched the National Clean Air Program to prepare clean air so targets. The goal of NCAP, these are also very, very important, to, re to reduce around 20 to 30 percentage of reduction of particulate matter 2.5 and particulate matter 10 concentration by taking 2017 as a base year. That means compared to 2017, they would like to reduce this PM 2.5 and PM 10 around 20 to 30 percentage. But so far, these targets are very, you know, like uh, very gradually, very slowly, we are moving towards the targets. Under this program, around 132 non-attainment cities, that means the air quality, which is bad, those cities are 132, those 132 cities were picked up and in these 132 cities, NCEP is being implemented. Okay, and this will be implemented based on the data collected from those cities between the 2014 to 2018. It started in 2019. This is about the NCAP. And the objective is obviously to improve the air quality monitoring network and to collect the efficient data and uh, give that information to and share that information to various public departments. And finally, proper management plan so that they can reduce the air pollution in these cities. Okay, this is the topic number one. Second topic is about the sites. Okay, recently the 50th anniversary of sites act, I mean sites convention enactment, this was observed. In this context, we try to understand about the sites. You know that sites is all about the convention on the international trade in endangered species. It, it prevent the illegal trade of plants and animals okay, among the nations. And the sites consist of appendix 1, appendix 2 and appendix 3. Okay, Of course, different uh, species will cover under different appendixes. Majority of these animals, majority of the plants and animals, they come under appendix 2. These are trade strictly controlled. Okay, It cannot be allowed. Appendix 1, they trade permitted only in the exceptional circumstances. Sites. March 3 of 2023, it marked the 50th anniversary of the sites. The sites was, this convention was, you know, like enacted. This convention came into existence in 1973. You know that 1972 was very important for Wildlife Protection Act. 1973 is for sites. And tell me students, in which year we started the Project Tiger? Put your answer in the comment section. In 2013, UN, United Nations General Assembly, they proclaimed that every year March 3rd, that means the day we enacted the sites, the day we will observe as a UN World Wildlife Day, UN World Wildlife Day every year March 3rd it is going to be observed. This year sites anniversary theme 2023 is 
partnership for wildlife conservation that means the cooperation between the nations is required to preserve the wildlife conservation sites is an international agreement as i said already what is the aim it ensures the international trade in wild animals as well as the plants it will not threaten the threaten their existence the plant and animals existence site secretariat is administered by unep united nation environment program it is based in geneva switzerland okay sites agreements are legally binding agreements and they are not going to replace the national laws that means national i mean sites will not override the national laws but whatever the national laws are there they will be enacted by keeping sites in mind okay so national laws their framework is under the sites convention next topic 3 it is about the carbon border adjustment mechanism so this is mainly related to eu eu came up with this con concept known as carbon border management adjustment that means if any product is coming out of eu into U eu they will check how much carbon emissions related to that product okay for example if they are in, in imp importing this you know like this kind of stylus then they will check okay how much carbon emissions how much carbon consumption involved in the production of this good based on that the tax will be imposed this is mainly for what this is mainly for you know like uh, so discourage the carbon emissions as well as in eu the carbon emissions they try to control the reduction of the carbon emissions and if any companies carbon emissions are very high they are penalizing within the eu but when any country outside of the eu in spite of using very high amount of the carbon and they are exporting their product into eu those products are getting advantage price advantage compared to the eu product okay to nullify that to nullify that kind of price advantage any product which manufactured out of eu that product will be scrutinized for the carbon carbon you know like amount of carbon consumed in the production of that good so this is about the carbon border adjustment mechanism the eu is planning to introduce carbon border adjustment mechanism of course the outside of the european union countries they are not you know like uh, happy with this decision they are claiming that this decision is about discriminating the non european countries against the european countries it is a duty on the imports based on the carbon emissions resulting from the production of that goods this is mainly to discourage emissions carbon emissions and and it also affect the production and exports it forces it force enforce from 1st october 2023 and it is going to be permanently there from the 1st january 2026 this is about the european union in 2021 european union proposed the carbon border adjustment mechanism but it was not materialized at that time so it started in 2023 it is going to be very strict from 2026 actually this carbon border adjustment mechanism it is as a part of the european european union grand goal that is fit for 5055 in 2030 package so what is this this is about reduce the greenhouse gas emissions at least 55 percentage by 2030 compared to 1990 levels and this carbon border adjustment mechanism it will first applies to cement iron steel aluminum fertilizer and electricity imports that means whichever the sectors consume high amount of carbon though for those sectors this carbon border adjustment mechanism will applicable according to european union this carbon border adjustment mechanism is designed to fully compliance with the wto rules that means european union is saying that in the process of this carbon border adjustment mechanism they are not discriminating any company next topic green washing here we are going to discuss about green washing as well as a blue washing green washing is about when a company is claiming that their products are environment friendly even though they are not environment friendly that is known as green washing very popularly you know that volkswagen company they claimed that their carbon emissions are very low but the results proven other way blue washing is about when companies are claiming that they are their production process are you know like sustainable i mean environment friendly in terms of ocean okay but even though their 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 production methods are not friendly to marine 
okay not friendly to so ocean water ocean life so that is known as blue washing so green washing is about environment friendly blue washing is about the ocean friendly okay now let's see blue washing international panel of experts on sustainable food system they released a report known as who's tipping the scales in this they mentioned about the blue washing it's a marketing tactic used by companies to deceive the consumers that they are working towards achieving the sustainable use and conservation of food system and water bodies okay they claim that they are putting efforts for the sustainable use of the water bodies and sustainable use of the food systems but in reality they are not doing example an oil and gas company claiming that they are leading in protecting the ocean while continuing engaging in the deep sea oil drilling and harming the marine ecosystem the same way if companies claiming that they are putting efforts for sustainable environment even though they are damaging the environment that is known as green washing okay next river cities alliance so this river cities alliance program is about the river cities okay rivers which are flowing through cities normally rivers which are flowing through cities they are more vulnerable for the pollution especially the solid waste pollution to conserve the rivers which are flowing through cities government of india started very innovative program that is known as river cities alliance okay as time going on so many river cities across the world they started joining into this alliance now let's see regarding the river cities alliance national mission for clean ganga in association with the national institute of urban affairs they organized the river cities alliance it is a seminar in this seminar may they mainly discussed about partnership for building international river sensitive cities you know that majorly cities they got flourished along the river banks and even the civilizations also you know that indus valley civilization and chinese civilization on the river bank of yangtze and egypt and mesopotamia euphrat on the river banks of tigris and euphrates and uh, egypt civilization and uh, along the river bank of nile african civilization all the civilizations are along the river banks this river cities alliance it is a joint initiative of ministry of jal shakti and the ministry of housing and urban affairs main vision of connecting the river cities and focusing the sustainable river centric development beginning with 30 member cities in 2021 now the around 110 river cities are started taking part in this initiative the main objective is about knowledge exchanging regarding the river cities and how to uh, conserve river cities in a better way and it is also about the it is also about learning i mean it's also about getting opportunity to learn about different river cities and what kind of methods they are following in, in conserving rivers next one this is regarding the ladakh's first biodiversity heritage sites if any particular site is very very popular for this biodiversity as well as it is there for very long period of time very decades then that particular site will be given the heritage heritage status along with the biodiversity status that is known as Lada biodiversity heritage site ladakh identified as biodiversity heritage sites recently in ladakh yaya so lake it was declared as ladakh's first biodiversity heritage lake under the biodiversity act you know that national biodiversity act was made in 2002 the biodiversity management committee the panchayat chumtang village and secure himalayan project actually the secure himalayan project is related to snow leopard to protect and conserve the snow leopard the secure himalayan project was launched by union ministry the recently these three organizations they recently resa- resolved that yaya so lake will be declared as the biodiversity heritage site it is known as a birds paradise paradise for its beautiful lake located of 4580 820 meters in ladakh that means this is the elevation from the sea level it is also one of the highest breeding sites for the black necked crane in india that is also very important secure himalayan project like i said earlier it is related to you know like snow leopard naturally in india you will find tiger as well as snow leopard jaguar you don't find in india naturally even cheetah also cheetah extinct in india 
but recently we started the translocation of cheetah from african continent okay especially from country like namibia this secure himalaya project it supports the government effort for the conservation of snow leopard and its habitat by developing and implementing the landscape okay they identified few landscape and they would like to develop those landscape so that they can encourage the snow leopard population these landscapes are changtang ladakh landscape in jnk lahwal pangi and kinaur landscape gangotri govin and dharma bians landscape and kanchenjunga upper tista valley kanchenjunga present in sikkim you know that so this is about various landscape next we are going to discuss, discuss about the gangotri yamunotri and kedarnath and badrinath here prayag platform okay recently ministry of jal shakti jal shakti ministry they launched prayag a real time monitoring center for planning of projects of the river water quality during the 11th meeting of empowered task force of the national mission for clean ganga under the national mission for clean ganga by using this prayag platform they will try to monitor the water quality okay the real time water quality will be monitored at different levels at different checkpoints of the checkpoint of the river ganges prayag st stands for platform for real time analysis of yamuna ganga and their tributaries they will check so during which seasons river pollution is increasing and during what times river pollution is increasing and decreasing regarding the national mission for clean ganga it was established in 2011 as a registered society it was its aim is to mainly to rehabilitate and boost existing sewerage treatment plants second one reduce the air reduce the water pollution maintain water flow without changing the natural variation and restore the surface and ground water in ganga and its tributary basins previously okay these activities are used to be implemented by national ganga council now this activities are replaced with the national mission for clean ganga okay this is the background information regarding this next wildlife protection act 2022 you know students recently wildlife protection act was amended and previously six schedule used to be there in the wildlife protection act now we are having only four schedules regarding the wildlife protection act in 1972 wildlife protection act was made to conserve animals in india Pre before that for the first time the wildlife birds protection act was passed by british india in 1887 from there the journey started and finally it ends with the 1972 wildlife protection act recently we amended this in 2022 as a part of rationalizing the schedules present in wildlife protection act features of this act this wildlife protection act previously it did not include the provisions of sites now they also included the provisions of sites that is the first one according to this new act more powers given to union government here central government is the authority which designates management authority and they grant permissions related to imports and exports of trade and any other aspects central government can regulate prohibit import and trade regarding the invasive species next central government can also notify a conservation a conservative reserve conservative reserve that is a buffer zone it reduces the number of schedules from 6 to 4 only previously 6 now 4 control of sanctuaries to chief wildlife warden all the wildlife sanctuary in a particular state they come under the control of the chief wildlife warden and chief wildlife warden will be appointed by the state voluntary surrendering of captive animals if anyone is having captive animals they can surrender okay so that state will take protection for sanctuary falling under scheduled areas okay the management of the sanctuary which are present under the scheduled areas regarding those managements grama sabha approval have to be taken then states can declare areas adjacent to national park and sanctuaries as the conservation areas so that certain human activities can be limited in those areas increasing of the penalties if any violations are occurred so then obviously compared to previously now penalties increase to around 1 lakh in certain general violation and in specific violation it is penalty increased to 25000 so these are some of the changes 
and under this new wildlife protection act various organizations also constituted for example national board for wildlife as well as state board for wildlife then central zoo authority and national tiger conservation authority you know that national tiger conservation authority was enacted in 2005 it is one of the body chiefly regulates the tiger reserve in india constitution provisions through 42nd constitution amendment act 1976 birds forest wildlife previously these used to be in the state list of through this amendment they shifted to the concurrent list that means now parliament also can make laws on that particular area you know our insight website is having the feature of insta curious you can check as well in today's so what we uh, mentioned in the insta curious is given the highest legal protection under 1977 elephant is the only animal which is mentioned under schedule 1 of the wildlife protection act it's the only animal which is allowed which is allowed or owned legally or uh, no other animal is legally allowed to own that you have to understand next it is about the vulture first synchronized vulture survey this kind of first things you have to remember very well because anything which which happens for the first time that is a highly probable to be asked in the examination for example recently nandapa in nandapa butterfly been spotted so these kind of facts are very very important so synchronized vulture vulture survey it took place in three states tamil nadu karnataka and kerala in different wildlife sanctuaries and national park we we'll try to understand and we also try to know important vultures which are located in india the forest and wildlife department of kerala tamil nadu and karnataka they organized synchronized first synchronized vulture survey in western ghats it was carried out in satyamangalam tiger reserve as well as mudumalai tiger reserve in tamil nadu vayanad wildlife sanctuary in kerala bandipur tiger reserve nagarhol tiger reserve in karnataka in these areas this first synchronized survey was happened vultures in india it is one of the 22 species which are present in this birds which contain la- large carrion eating birds okay out of those 22 species one species is vulture in india around nine species of vultures we can see okay this is nine given the list here most of the most of these nine species they are facing the extinction so that government should take various steps to encourage their breeding as well as the research let's see what kind of measures taken by government of india badgers long billed slender billed and oriental white back back these are the ones included in the schedule 1 of the wildlife protection act 1972 rest are under schedule 4 you know that wildlife protection act schedule is reduced from 6 to 4 conservation efforts ministry of environment and forest they launched the vulture action plan 20 to 2025 even government of india discouraging use of diclofenac in animal husbandry okay as well as veterinary medicine because when diclofenac is administered into the animals of their death when vultures are eating the carcass of those dead, dead animals the diclofenac is going into these animals and it is causing the death of the vultures that is the reason diclofenac is mostly discouraging by the veterinarians to study the cause of deaths of vultures in india vulture care center was set up in pinjore haryana in 2001 in 2004 this vulture care center was upgraded to first vulture conservation and breeding center now in rest of india also various parts this was established at present there are nine vulture conservation and breeding centers are located out of these nine three are directly supervised by bombay natural history and society so this is about the vultures and the 10th one 10th one regarding the high sea treaty high sea means beyond the sea area beyond the exclusive economic zone first you have to know what is this exclusive economic zone exclusive economic zone is from the 12 nautical miles to up to 200 nautical miles from the territorial water that is the exclusive economic zone beyond the exclusive economic zone that part of sea won't covered by any particular countries jurisdiction so in that particular area that means in the international waters how to protect the biodiversity how to use the international water in a more sustainable manner for addressing all these issues one legal one legal uh, treaty is being uh, you know like drafted is being enacted by the unvo that is about un high seas treaty 
Recently, UNO agreed on high seas treaty for the protection and sustainable use of the marine biodiversity areas beyond the national jurisdiction. It was also agreed during talks by the UN during the Intergovernmental Conference on Marine Biodiversity of Areas Beyond National Jurisdiction BBNJ. BBNJ stands for Biodiversity of Areas Beyond National Jurisdiction in New York. In this meeting, they were talking about the necessity of the new treaty. Before this, we used to have a UN clause, United Nations Convention on the Law of Sea. Complement to that, now the new act is being drafted by the UNO. This treaty is yet to be formally adopted. Once it is formally adopted and ratified, then it will be implemented. High seas. According to 1958, Geneva Convention on the High Seas, part of the sea, which is not included in the territorial water of any country, that is known as High Sea. It is area beyond the exclusive economic zone. And no country is responsible in this area. High Seas Treaty. In 1982, UNO, they enacted UN Convention on the Law of Sea, which regulated the high sea. It is the only official legal binding law so far. However, there are no comprehensive legal work regarding the high sea so far. Okay? This UN clause, UN clause is also not offering comprehensive legal framework. So, instead of that, we are coming up with this high sea treaty. Next, so this high sea treaty is a part of UN was target to achieve the 30 by 30 target at which was set at the UNCBD, United Nations Convention on the Biological Diversity, COP15. If you know where this bio Biodiversity COP15, where this meeting was happened, if you know, put your answer in the comment section. This main target is achieving, I mean, protecting the 30 percentage of the sea at least by 2030. Now, yesterday's video question, with reference to Baltic Sea, consider the following statements regarding the Baltic Sea. Denmark, Estonia, Finland are some of the countries that enclose the Baltic Sea as it is connected to the North Sea by Kiel Canal. It includes the Gulf of Mexico. No, Gulf of Mexico is not at all related to Baltic Sea. Where was the first summit of G20 was held? USA. India is a member of which among the following? Asia Pacific Economic Framework? No. Then Association of Southeast Asia? No, not Asia. East Asia Summit? Yes. East Asia Summit. Next. We'll see today's video question. If a particular plant species is placed under schedule, 6 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. What is its implication? Next question. Vultures, which used to be very common in India countryside some years ago are rarely seen nowadays. This is attributed to. All these are PYQs. Try to answer these questions. And which one of the following best describe the term green washing? Green washing. These are the three PYQs related to today's questions. As we reach to the end of this topic, end of this video, in this particular video, we discussed about these 10 topics and this is about prelims yielding series environment, January to April and detailed analysis regarding the this uh, prelims high yield series. And I hope this initiative is useful to you and if you need any further suggestions, please try to put those suggestions in the comment section. Thank you.